We're in another new chapter, Chapter 5, all about factors, multiples, and number patterns. Lesson 5.1, Model Factors. We can use models to find factors by using square tiles and arranging the required number of tiles into rectangles to form arrays. We need to find the factors of 16. We can take 16 counters and we can say we have two rows and there's eight in each row. And we can keep arranging the counters to find all the different types of arrays that would equal 16. A factor is a number multiplied by another number to find a product. And every whole number greater than one has at least two factors. That number, that whole number, and one. And some whole numbers have more factors. So two is a whole number and it's greater than one. It's got one as a factor and that number two. Three is a whole number. It's got its factors of three and a one. Seven is a whole number. Its factors are seven and a one. Same with 23. It's got a one for a factor and itself 23. And it doesn't matter how large the number is. 179 has the factors 179 and a one. 7,431 has the factors 7,431 and a one. So every whole number greater than one has at least two factors, that number itself and a one. Many numbers can be broken into factors in different ways. We have the factors for 18. 18 is equal to 18 times one. There we have itself 18 and that one, just like we talked about. It's also nine times two, so we have a nine and a two as factors. And 18 is also equal to six times three, so we have a six and three as factors. And the factors for 18 are one, two, three, six, nine, and 18 from least to greatest. We can model and record the factors of six on grid paper we can draw one row of six. Here's our one. Six is a whole number and its factors are itself and a one, so we can do one row of six. And six is also equal to two times three, so we can make two rows of three. And the factors of six from least to greatest are one, two, three, and six. Two factors that make a product are sometimes called a factor pair. Six has two factor pairs, one and six, that's itself and the one like we've been talking about. That's one row of six. We also have a two and a three. That could be two rows of three. We can also show the factor pairs of six as six rows of one. Now they're coming down vertically. We have six rows with one in each row, and we can say we have three rows of two. And the commutative property states we can multiply in any order and get the same product. So there are two factor pairs for six, a factor that pair that contains a one and six, and it doesn't matter if we write one and six or six and one, and another pair that contains a two and a three, and we could say it, com it contains a three and a two. It's like you have a pair of shoes, a left shoe and a right shoe. And it doesn't matter if we say the right shoe first and then the left shoe, it's still the same pair of shoes. So six has two factor pairs and it doesn't matter which one number we write first in the pair. So when listing the factors of a number, one will always be in the list. For whole numbers, whose value is greater than one, they will have at least two factors, that number and a one. Remember, whole numbers are counting numbers like zero, one, two, three, four, five. So any counting number whose value is greater than a one, so we wouldn't use these, would we? 
they'll have at least two factors, that number and one. We can use grid paper to help us draw arrays to help us name the factors of a number. List the factors of 16 from least to greatest. So 16 is going to be our product. We know we have 1 and 16. That would be one row of 16. And 16 is also equal to 2 times 8. We have two rows of 8. And 16 is also equal to 4 times 4. That's four rows of 4. And the factors for 16 from least to greatest are 1, 2, 4, 8, and 16. Did you notice we didn't list the 4 twice? Even though it was here, we didn't say 1, 2, 4, 4, 8, 16. We only listed the 4 one time because it's still a factor of 16. We only needed one of the 4s. Did you also notice that as the first factor doubled, 1 to 2, that's double a 1, right? The second factor halved. It got cut in half. So 1 doubled to a 2. The 16 got cut in half to an 8. And as 2 doubles to a 4, the 8 get, got cut in half to a 4. See that pattern? Not every group of factors will do that, but many will. We can use tiles or counters to help us find all the factors of a product. We have 7 is equal to, we can put 7 counters on here. We can make one row of 7. That's 1 times 7. Can we arrange the 7 counters to make equal groups, equal rows? Is there another way? Well, we don't have enough counters to make two rows because one would be missing. We don't have enough counters to make three rows, so it looks like our factors for seven are a one and a seven. That's the only factor pair for seven. What about eight? We can add this one back here and do one row of eight. That would be one times eight. Can we make a different array using the tiles? We can make two rows of four. That would be two times four. And even if we turned these sideways and did four rows of two or eight rows of one, it would still be the same factors. For eight, we have a one and eight. We also have a two and four. So we already know that when we have a whole number whose value is greater than 1, that it's going to have at least two factors, itself and a 1. If the product is an even number, 2 will be one of the factors. Its product will have at least two factor pairs, a pair containing a 1 and a pair containing a 2. That's for even numbers. So even numbers like 4, 6, 8, 10, 12, 14, 16. Those are even numbers, aren't they? We have 1 times 4 and 2 times 2. For 6, we have 1 times 6 and 2 times 3. For 8, we have 1 times 8 and 2 times 4. But it says it will have at least 2. So these have two factor pairs, but look at 12. It's got three factor pairs. It's got 1 times 12, 2 times 6, and 4 times 3. If the product is an odd number, it may only have one factor pair of 1 and that odd number. 3 has one factor pair of a 1 and 3. 5 has one factor pair of a 1 and 5. 7 has only one factor pair of a 1 and 7. 11 only has 1 and 11. 13 only has 1 and 13. And 17 only has 1 and 17. But be careful, many odd number products have more than one factor pair. So don't think just because it's odd that it's only going to have one factor pair. 9 has a 1 times 9 and a 3 times 3. 15 has a 1 times 15 and a 3 times 5. These are odd numbers. 21 is an odd number. It's got 1 times 21 and 3 times 7. So be very careful. 
Tala spent $24 on earrings. If each pair of earrings cost the same whole dollar amount, how many could she have bought? So what prices could the earrings have been and what quantities could they have been? She spent $24 on earrings, but we don't know how many pairs she bought or how much each pair cost. Well, we can make a list or table of possible factor pairs. We would find factor pairs for 24. And we can think, well, we'll have price for each pair up here and the quantity here. So if she bought one pair of earrings and she spent $24, then that one pair must have been $24. If she bought two pairs, then each pair was $12. Two and 12 are factors of 24. If she bought three pairs, then they were $8 each. Three and eight are factors of 24. And she could have purchased four pairs for $6, six pairs for $4, eight pairs for $3, 12 pairs for $2, or if they were really on sale for a good price, she could have bought 24 pairs for a dollar each. So Tala could have bought 1, 2, 3, 4, 6, 8, 12, or 24 pairs of earrings, depending on how much each pair cost. Emma has 12 counters. How many different ways can she make a rectangle if she used all 12 counters and none of the models showed the same side lengths. So we can arrange counters into possible ways. And the answer will be the factor pairs of 12. We can make one row of 12 for 1 times 12. We can make two rows of 6 for 2 times 6. We can make three rows of 4 for 3 times 4. And there's three different ways. We have three different factor pairs for 12. We need to circle true or false for each of these. So true or false, five and six are a factor pair of 30. Do you think that's true or false? If you said true, you're right. Five times six is equal to 30. True or false, is 10, are 10 and 20 Factor pairs of 30? What do you think? 10 and 20 are a factor pair of 30. Is that true or false? If you said false, you're right. 10 and 20 are not a factor pair of 30. 10 times 20 is 200. True or false? 2 and 15 are a factor pair of 30. What do you think? 2 and 15 are a factor pair of 30, true or false? If you said true, you're right. If we have two 15s, 2 times 15, it is equal to 30. We can even say 15 plus 15. That's two 15s. That's equal to 30. So remember, factors are numbers that we multiply together to get a product. We need to multiply them together to get a product. That's factors. In our next lesson, 5.2, we're going to learn about factors and divisibility. I hope you have a really wonderful day, and I'll see you next time. Bye.